What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and I am joined by Degenerate J. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a Mandalorian game. So we're going to—we don't really have a script here. We don't really have a, a forward plan, but we kind of want to just talk about, you know, if a game like this can ever happen. Would it be a good idea? Would it make sense? And, and go from there, okay? I got obviously connecting it here uh, with the show, using maybe the popularity of the show uh, to help some of that. So before I get too far into this, make sure, as always, you guys are subscribed here. Have the bell icon turned on so you guys don't miss out on any videos and while you're at it make sure you guys are subscribed to Jay's channel both his main channel and his let's play channel will be in the description as well as a pinned comment I know Jay is a massive Star Wars fan he's done tons of Star Wars stuff uh, in the past and Jay it's truly a pleasure as always having you on this video so thank you so much for joining me Hey, man, thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk about this. It's a pretty cool idea, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something I, you know, I was thinking, you know, I love Star Wars, and I've talked about Star Wars quite a bit on this channel, and it's like, well, I want to do Mandalorian coverage. Sometimes it does good, sometimes it does bad, but, you know, what does most of the time do good is gaming stuff, and I thought, you know, the Mandalorian, I think, it's in my opinion, we can, I guess, start at this. Like, will it ever happen? I think it's honestly possible. I really... Well, one thing I want to throw in there from the, the vault of, of EA and Star Wars in general. Now, we're assuming, I guess I can't assume that EA will have the license of Star Wars You know, going forward. It's possible. Their contract actually ends next year for the Star Wars game, so we'll have to see if they keep it after that. But uh, I think with The Mandalorian's success, I don't know how you don't. Also, they technically were doing a game like this, a bounty hunter game. Remember, it was going to star Nolan North. Amy Henning was behind it. That entire just, uh, you know, the destruction that happened. I believe that was Visceral Games, right, where they were going to make that game. They canceled it. They canceled it for an open world, like an, uh, like an MMO kind of game for a Star Wars. Or I think it was like an open world RPG. They were working on that. I think a Vancouver team. Then that was shut down. Uh, but remember, this game was shut down for another Star Wars game, which was also shut down after. So it's been a disaster for EA in that regard. But remember that game that was supposed to be a bounty hunter game. You'd go to multiple worlds. It would be like a Wild West kind of thing. Nolan North and Amy Henning both have said it would kind of be Uncharted in the Star Wars world, which I try to not remind myself of because if you guys know me with Uncharted, I mean, that sounds like the greatest thing of all time. So it, that would that's just a huge disappointment that that never happened. So Jay, firstly, should it happen? Like, does it make sense? And secondly, if it did, what would maybe you want to see from it? Yeah, so one thing that's interesting is they really did have an idea like that before with Star Wars 1313, yep, like you too. said, which was yep. that game previously. And they had showed off some of the footage of it, and it was going to be, uh, you know, at first on Coruscant and then kind of go around, apparently. Um, it's really too bad we didn't see that, but, you know, the acquisition and all this other stuff kind of got in the way. What does... There's so much you could do with this idea. I mean, obviously you have, you know, the child along with Mando traveling around from world to world. You have them doing different stuff. I think that one thing that you have to think about too, or that anybody has to think about with this idea that is difficult is that every Star Wars game ever since the acquisition has pretty much been tied in, except the mobile ones as purely canonical. And so anything that happens in Star Wars Battlefront 2 in the story happened in the Star Wars universe, you know, in the story canonically. And so it kind of comes down to if they have room for this as well within the overarching scheme of the Mandalorian show before it ends, or if there's places in the timeline you can do this, or if you focus on a different Mandalorian, but I think that that would not work because people don't just love the Mandalorians, they love Mando, you know, as a character. Right. And so I think that you would need to have it fit into that overarching style for it to work you would also need to have different worlds there's a lot you could do i mean it depends on how open you want it to be too do you have mando going to ca cantina and he can pick a bounty or do you have it be just a purely story-based linear thing with an open environment there's so much you could do with this uh, but i think that one of the nicest things that this would do would be to show us sort of a no jedi allowed type gameplay experience sort of like we saw from certain things in the past like uh star wars bounty hunter on the ps2 where it's you know nobody here is force sensitive in terms of who you play as it's just you're a person in star wars which is one reason why people love mando and one reason why they love characters like han solo is they're just sort of these cowboyish characters thrown into a magical world with all kinds of stuff happening around them right no totally i think yeah. 
it, it's tough because you have like the the pitch for it sounds good and like it makes sense and you capitalize off the show stuff like that right but then like you said to actually make it fit so like that part like is good it makes sense everything would kind of work uh, you could sell it I would assume pretty easily to like investors or just say hey we want to make a game like this but then you think about how you would put it together and it's like yeah you know the show's still going, so you don't know where it's going. And I don't trust EA, by the way, to fill in it's a fill in like the future. They can fill in gaps, but I don't want them like telling seasons four and five of Mandalorian before it happens. You know what I mean? And, and I don't think that would ever happen in the first place. So it's what Jay kind of said, where you'd have to say, okay, well, is there room in between these episodes? And then uh, you know, I'm not gonna. There's no gonna, not gonna be spoilers for uh, these seasons. I don't know if Jay, if you're watching season two, but like one non-spoiler thing is like season two so far is very much uh like they have been back to back to, you know what i mean like it picks up right at the end of the last episode so there is no in-between time now there's in-between time for the other characters and maybe you could work something like that where he i mean he goes to so many worlds sees so many people they have lives when he's not there but if you're if you're following just him right mando if you're just following him uh, the show, even season one, but definitely season two, is very, like, it happens the next episode. It takes place right after the episode before. So there's not a lot of free time. So, yeah, I almost feel like when you said you just do another Mandalorian, I kind of, like, you're not capitalizing necessarily off of, you know, the character or the child. Because if you have another Mandalorian, you can't have the child, right? And so when we talk about if it's a Mandalorian game, I guess maybe we should specify. Are we talking about, you know, the show or just a game with a Mandalorian in it? I almost feel like they'd have to go more of a Mandalorian. But honestly, I don't think that's a bad idea. I mean, you have Bo-Katan, and you have kind of uh, this, re not even a resurgence, you just have this surge in general of popularity for Mandalorian, and more people are beginning to just know who they are. You know, I mean, I would say it was more like a cult, like a smaller thing, even during, like, Clone Wars. But, like, now, I think it's ballooning up where you could definitely do something where, hey, if you want to tell a, a random story with the Mandalorian, it could be any. Pick pick the era of the Mandalorians, right? And they follow different rules based on the different time periods. Pick one and then just go. And, yeah, you can make it a where you pick up bounties and you go to – it could be like a Red Dead Redemption on multiple planets. I mean, I think it would be difficult. It would be very, very ambitious. Um, but I think it would work. I really do. Like you said, there's something to not having the Force. And I'm not saying substitute this in for, like, Battlefront 3, but – but the, the, the amazing part of, of a Star Wars when it wasn't held down by any company was that there were – there were not hundreds, but there were, you know, there were dozens and dozens of games. Some of them were terrible. Some of them were really good. Some of them were in the middle. But we got all sorts of different kinds telling all these different kinds of stories, and I feel – when Star Wars is at its best in gaming, it's when we have that, that freedom. And so this would be, you know, one of those examples of it. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that having those multiple perspectives in Star Wars is one of the things that has always made it special. I mean, we see that right from the get-go in A New Hope. You have Luke, who's kind of in the middle at this point. You have Obi-Wan, who is essentially an old wizard type character. Uh, archetype, which is, you know, the Jedi that we see in the original trilogy, at least at the beginning. Uh, and we have Han Solo, who's kind of the more smuggler, scoundrel, cowboy character with his buddy Chewie. And there's all these different types of characters that fit into one overarching narrative, which is one of the things that makes Star Wars so special. It's also one thing that they captured again in Mandalorian. Uh, you know, it's really important that you're able to get that. And that is something that's been lost a little bit in gaming, I think, too. It's something we used to see back in Knights of the Old Republic and some of these more open era Star Wars games from what people call the golden age of the old Legends continuity. And we really haven't seen it in a while. I think Mandalorian could actually add more good faith to the Star Wars community. I think that they've had a rough go with games. Now, I haven't played it yet. I actually bought it, but I know that Squadrons is supposed to be a fun game to those who have played it, but it wasn't really marketed much, right. so no one bought it. I mean, I think people bought it, but I don't think a lot of people cared yep. as much as they did with Battlefront and stuff. The Battlefront game started with such a rough go and then got improved over time. You know, they are not doing the best in terms of releasing games. The only universal uh, success they've had is Fallen Order. And so they kind of need something else like that. Oh, totally. And to, and to your point on uh, Squadrons, you know, I think a, a world where we get those kind of games, it's fine. Like, I bought it. I played it. I liked it. Uh, but I played it for, like, maybe a week, and I haven't touched it since. But, like, 
you know, you could say, I guess you could say a couple different things about, you know, just the fact that that happened, but I think a world in which that kind of game exists is good. You know what I mean? At least they're trying. Now, hopefully EA doesn't get too scared off by it and says, oh my dear God, like we put money into this and it didn't do anything. Well, like Jay said, I mean, ultimately it was marketed, I would say terribly, came out in a crowded area, it was $40, was, it was a solid game, but it didn't have any, uh, no like additional, I don't know, features, like there was only, uh, I think two or three multiplayer modes in the entire thing, right? I think only two. So that's not enough. It wasn't, in terms of content, it wasn't good enough. So you can take things from that, good and pos or good and bad. So uh, yeah, I mean, t to me, it's, it's, I think you can do it. It's if EA obviously wants to. That's the tough thing too, because I mean, you have squadrons, they're going on to a new game now. Do they stay strictly in like a, uh, like a, you know, a flying kind of thing? Do they stick with that? You have Jedi Fallen Order. Obviously that's a series now, so you're going to have multiple games there. Dice, I mean, you already have them making like a game a year. You're going to make them make Battlefront 3, I assume, eventually. There's also, again, the issue that next year is it. Next December is when the contract ends. So we're going to be able to be very mad or happy, depending on what ha or depending on who you are, when they have like a 10-year a license, uh, you know, a contract extension uh, with Disney. So we'll have to see how that goes. But I hope if they still have it, I hope their plan is to keep expanding, maybe have more studios make Star Wars games to get the diver uh, diversity out. And hopefully you do, like, strike fire. Like, you do actually do something good there. Um, and if they don't, that's actually, I would say, probably better because then anybody can make it. And then I would say you're probably almost guaranteed to get a game like that. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that we just need more multiple perspectives of the type of character, whether that's, hey, in this one you're a Jedi, in this one you are a smuggler, in this one you're a pilot. I think that all those things do make Star Wars special. It's not just one element of it. And I think that we also need a core focus on what Star Wars was. I don't want to get into critiquing the sequels, uh, but I think that a lot of problems have come up with Star Wars due to a lack of capturing the original feeling of Star Wars in a good way while innovating. And I think that that's something actually that Fallen Order was able to do that really nothing else has done. I mean, Mandalorian's doing it as well, but... Uh, we really need that back in Star Wars so that there can be a little bit less of a divide in the fan base and a little more excitement when something comes out because I would say right now, the biggest feeling that whenever something comes out is skepticism. Totally. So let us know, guys, in the comments below. What do you think? Do you think there should be a Mandalorian game? How would you do it if you were given uh, you know, the keys to this property? Let us know. As always, make sure you guys are subscribed here, have the bell icon turned on, and then check out Jay's channel. All his stuff is in the description and a pinned comment, his main channel, second channel. Uh, as always, Jay, it's an absolute pleasure talking to you. We always have so much fun here. Uh, like I said, Jay does a ton of Star Wars stuff as well, so you're going to be able to get Star Wars stuff uh, from his channel jay thank you so much for being on this video with me hey dude thanks for having me i appreciate it we're hitting all my favorite topics today <laughs> it's, it's a really good day thank you guys so much for watching i truly do appreciate it i hope to see you all on the next video